Thank you for joining us today for the virtual Sunday service with the Center for Creative Living. CCL, a charter of the Universal Church of the Master, has served and supported the spiritual needs of its community here in the Bay Area for over 20 years. Good morning. This is the Reverend Donnie Boone, and I'm so excited to have our church service this morning. This has been a very difficult week for a lot of people. I want you to completely relax and realize they're in a very safe place. The Center for Creative Living is a delightful group of people who come together to talk about spirit, to talk about what's going on with them, and we'll also be talking a little bit about what's coming up later on. Because we are not going to be getting back into our brick and mortar church, it looks like, for a while. The, the county is now uh, saying that we're going back into the red zone, which means mm, it's very hard for us to gather. It doesn't mean we aren't thinking about you and hoping you're having a very great time and, and that you have something planned for Thanksgiving where you can be very safe and take care of yourself, and yet still enjoy the celebration of being thankful. Okay? And we're going to, this morning, have a wonderful speaker. And her name is the Reverend Dottie Boone. <laughs> so, I, I like to introduce myself. That's kind of exciting. And, of course, we're going to have a, a prayer that's going to be led by our associate pastor, and that's the Reverend Ann Corbin. And then we're going to be having a wonderful tape presentation uh, that our, our great doctor, Janet Childs, is going to be singing and playing the guitar with, a, a with an attached video. And uh, that's always beautiful to see. And so thank you so very much for joining us. So glad to have you here. Good morning. I'm Reverend Ann Corbin, Associate Pastor at the Center for Creative Living, and I'm here to bring you this morning's prayer. But first, I'd like to take just a quick moment to acknowledge Reverend Dr. Eileen Augustine. Let's send her lots of love and light as she grieves the loss of her beautiful doggy, Sam. I know his love and spirit will always be with you, Eileen. Thank you for sharing your love so openly. Sam was really lucky to have you. I'd also like to thank you for having my back when I was not feeling so well last week by you doing the morning prayer for me, even though you were going through your own challenges. I hope you know that I'm here for you too. Feel free to call on me. Sending you many blessings, my friend. So, you know, I work for a global company and many of my colleagues celebrate the holiday Diwali. A few years ago, I had started to receive Happy Diwali cards in my email from vendors and co-workers, so I had decided that I would look it up, being the spiritual junkie that I am, <clears throat> and found that, like so many holidays around the world, it just shows us that we are all one, no matter our expression, culture, or belief. I'd like to share with you some information about Diwali, and also a prayer to the goddess Lakshmi that I found online um, along with something from my own heart. I felt that this holiday and the meaning for celebrating exemplifies the message that Reverend Dottie has for us today. So Diwali is a five-day festival of lights that is celebrated by millions of Hindus, Sikhs, and Jains around the world. Diwali, which for some also coincides with harvest and New Year celebrations, is a festival of new beginnings and the triumph of good over evil, light over darkness. Many people purchase new clothes, clean out their homes. It's a time for charitable giving and providing service to those in need. There's also a time of gift giving during one of the days of celebration. Does this sound a little familiar to you? Because the Hindu calendar is a lunar calendar, just like the Jewish calendar, Diwali falls at different times every year, usually somewhere between mid-October to mid-November. And this year, the main day of celebration took place on Saturday, November 14th. The name Diwali comes from the Sanskrit word 
Deepavali, meaning rows of lighted lamps. Homes, shops, and public places are decorated with small oil lamps called dayas. People also enjoy displays of fireworks, and I understand that sweets are abounding during Diwali, so the children really love this holiday. I remember that every year around this time, there used to be a fireworks show at the San Jose Fairgrounds, and I discovered that it was in celebration of Diwali. But I guess it's not going to happen this year due to the pandemic. Hopefully next year. Each religion that celebrates this marks different historical events, stories, or myths as the reason for this celebration. All the stories have the same theme of triumph of good over evil. In Northern India, for example, they celebrate the story of King Rama's return to Ayodhya after he defeated Ravana by lighting rows of clay lamps. Southern India celebrates it as the day that Lord Krishna defeated the demon Narakasura. The Sikhs and Jains have other stories as well. It is a time for us to open up to our oneness and to rise to our highest selves. The third day of celebration is dedicated to the goddess Lakshmi, who is celebrated as the goddess of wealth, but she represents so much more. Her four hands represent material well-being, morality, love, and liberation, which are inseparable in Lakshmi. Goddess Lakshmi reveals to us a world that is possible if we understand the four aspects, aspects as a whole. Feed the hungry, provide shelter to all those in need, let us care for our Mother Earth for the generations that follow us, and let us live a life guided by our love for God, ourselves, and all living beings, therefore allowing us to be free. So let's close our eyes and take in a nice deep breath. Breathing in all these wonderful energies of love, light, freedom, and all good things. Breathe out. Letting go of anything that is not serving your greatest and highest good and set all worries and dis-ease into a virtual basket that's sitting right next to you and allow our glorious creator to take these for you so you do not have to take them back. Dearest Mother, Father, God, dear Creator, thank you for this opportunity to be together today in this virtual environment and for allowing us to learn even more aspects of your wondrous love by sharing with us the joy of the holiday Diwali. This moment is so uplifting as we recognize that we truly are all one and that all life and celebration is sacred. May we feel your light shining on us and within us as we hear the powerful message from Reverend Dottie. You live within each of us and we can tap into your light and love to help us know that whatever appearances or stresses there are around us, we always have you supporting us. Thank you for our essential workers and for keeping us strong and resilient in these unusual times. We are so grateful. Thank you CCL and UCM for the freedom to express our love for you in our own way. May we always know you in your many forms. I give thanks for this opportunity to share this prayer to the goddess Lakshmi, another aspect of your love. We love you and say thank you, thank you, thank you. Om Jai Lakshmi, goddess born from the struggle between good and evil, Guide us toward the light. In a world where plenty is possible, let us end hunger, thirst, and homelessness. In your nurturing hands, let us seek refuge from want, fear, and violence. With your grace, let our world be reborn in your image, where all needs are met, where morality and love are abundant, and whereby we are free. Om Jai Lakshmi. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Amen. Blessed be, and so it is.
Good morning. I'm so glad to have you here. We're going to be talking about how you can fill yourself with the spiritual essence of the Creator. We're going through a very difficult time, and I have so many people complaining. I don't know if you have the same thing. Where These are very wonderful, beautiful, spiritual people, but all they're doing is about complaining about what's happening with the pandemic, complaining about what's happening in their life, about their health, about their work, about their kids, about their family. They're also complaining about what's happening politically. And it feels like, as spiritual beings, it would be a lot easier to raise ourselves up. What do you think about that? Have you thought about ways to raise yourself up? There are so many different ones, and a lot of them start out with meditation. And, you know, when you start meditating, you are aware that I should have done this more because meditation calms you down and lets that essence of spirit come in. And that is so amazing when you can do that. And, you know, the beauty of spirituality is that it's experienced so differently by everybody. Here at CCL, the Center for Creative Living, what we do is we accept everybody, no matter what faith, no matter what religion, no matter what you've been taught as a child. And we have people who have come to our church who are atheists. We have some people who are agnostic. We have people who are very, very different backgrounds and cultures. But each one of them, I know, is a child of God. But sometime they don't know about their divine self. They thoroughly are divorced or separated from their divine self. And that part of divinity you carry within you doesn't go away. But sometimes it feels like it starts flickering, like, like a candle in the wind. It flickers so that we can't hold on to that sense of spirituality and divinity as well as we would like to. And when you think about, okay, uh, that people everywhere, it's not just in the United States, it's in the world, are going through difficult times. And you might say, yes, so what can I do? Well, just like a grain of sand or a star in the sky, you're important to help change the way that people feel all around us. And the way that people feel is pretty much dependent on how you feel because you're that, that you're that link in that chain. So when you get to that point of really feeling spiritually empty, spiritually bereft, it's a time to just reach out and reach out inside you to your divine self, to your divine spirit, to your higher self, to your creator that's inside, however you want to call it. And that is your true motivation for living. And each one of us is this. Because it's already time in our incarnation to start being able to feel that divinity. So this morning, I want you to take a moment to just sit quietly. Do you have a calm spot? You can just sit quietly and invite your divine self to come join you. That essence of you that is so important. And then when you can make contact with that divine self, take a nice deep breath in. Just stay silent. Feel the energy as it comes into you. It's always there, but it's not bright and glowing. And as you bring it in through a deep breath and through silence, you will feel it emerge. Your divine self, your higher power, emerges when you allow it to by thinking positive thoughts, by sitting quietly and let it come out. And while you do this, get rid of all distractions. That doesn't mean you have to, you know, tie your kids to a chair. It doesn't mean you have to turn off everything. Mentally and emotionally, let go of all the distractions. And while we're talking about distractions, stop watching the television. 
stop listening to the radio or going to places where there's horrible distractions. Those interrupt what they say in the Chinese, that's the wall. That balance of who you are gets disrupted by so many different things. And when you have that disruption, it's so hard for you to get back to the place that is truly you. And so what I want you all to do is just ah, get rid of the distractions and get to a place where you can just totally calm down. Okay, can you do that? And I'm having a little bit of trouble over here. Uh, with my computer, uh, uh, and I'm and I'm, I've got uh, Reverend Corky is behind me telling me what to do, and thank you so very much. Now, so have you released your negative thoughts? You might want to number them or name them. The minute a negative thought comes into your head right now, just let it go. Just release it, and imagine that you are one with the infinite because you are and as you release all the negativity and as you calm down you can think about every positive thing positivity and positive emotions are so much greater than negative they don't feel like that when they're happening it makes you feel awful when you have negative things happening but when you speak to your divine self, there's always going to be a calmness. There's always going to be a feeling of love. There's going to be feeling a light that comes upon you. And I'm certain that many of you have met people that have that light shining brightly. I know with our Reverend Dr. Janet Childs, she's one of those people that that light shines so brightly. I've seen her have very negative things happen in her life. And yet, she doesn't bow down to the negativity. She, stand, she just stands there as a glowing light and radiates it to everybody else. And each one of us can do that because all it takes to do that is to appreciate your higher self as your best friend. How many of you talk to yourself? Do you ever hear messages? If it's a negative message that says, you're no good, you can't do that, you're never going to have money, you're never going to be healthy, just tell that negative voice to go pound sand, to go jump in a lake, whatever you want to tell it to do. That's not your higher spirit. Your higher spirit only tells you positive things. It only tells you that you are good and that your intentions are wonderful. So I want you to realize that every time you connect to that positive spirit, you will find that you are opening up more to all the good that's around you, not to the negativity. And I know you can do that. And one of the other ways for you to let go of that negative guck that seems to be what we're walking through right now, the negative sounds that are blaring in our ear, those negative pictures on television, on your iPad, is to bring in a positive, positive way of looking at life. And it's not putting your head under the pillow. It's not divorcing yourself from reality. It's looking at it differently. There's always a bright spot in everything that's going on. And so one of the ways to help you do that is through your dreams. So many people negate their dreams. They say, oh, it was just crazy. Then you're not doing it correctly. How does that sound? How to have a correct dream. And what that means is before you go to bed at night, ask your higher power to come help you with your dreams. And then tell your, if we tell your higher power what you would like to dream about. What would you like to change in your life? Now your higher power is in charge of you, not necessarily in charge of what's going on politically or, or in the world. It's in charge of you.
when you allow it to be. So put out what you would like to have changed. Are you tired of a certain thing? You can change it when you bring in your higher power to work with you. And there are so many people out there that don't even realize they can connect to their dreams. For them, it's just that little thing that happens. Your dreams are important. Your dreams have been used all over the world for many different things. And you particularly find dreams in the Old Testament of the, of the King James Bible. Scripture talks about so many different things that where a dream came in to be, prophesize something that was going to happen. And they listened to them. They fled Egypt. They had things that were coming up that came through them in a dream. And that dream could have started out with the Creator, or that dream could have been their higher self. But listening to what your dreams say to you is very important. And if you want to change that and get in touch with ways to get rid of this funk, this negativity, write down things that you want to have happen, that you can believe in happening. If you want to win a million dollars, but you say, I don't believe that, it'll never happen, you're right. Don't waste your higher power's time on that. Only ask for what you sincerely believe can happen and put it into the dream world. And you'll be amazed the results you get. They are incredible. And it brings about self-confidence when you ask for things that you believe in. If you believe that you're going to feel better and tell your power, your power, I'm tired of being depressed. And then go to sleep and wake up the next morning and you're going to feel, wow, the birds are chirping. I can hear singing. It's a beautiful day. Because you believed it would be. Your belief is the greatest thing you have going for you. Don't believe the negativity that's going around. Start looking at the belief you have within you. Because your spiritual dreams are for growth and learning, and for moving forward. Do you really want to work, move forward? Then start looking at what that means. Maybe you want a better job. Put it into your dream world. What kind of a job do you want? Your higher power is not going to help you get a job as a flight mechanic if you've never worked on your automobile. Now, do you understand? You need to put out what you know you can achieve when you truly believe in yourself. Now, if you were taking flight mechanic classes and you said, I want to be a flight mechanic, you're going to be, as long as you believe it. It's the same of any position that you want. Let your higher power work through you and with you with your dreams. I have had some dreams I started out this year and one of them was that I wanted to get the back of my house cleaned out. I had this shed. I don't know if any of you have a shed that you've just tossed everything in there. For 10 years, I've tossed stuff in there. And I didn't like that shed. I don't think that shed liked me either. And I didn't trust it. I just didn't like it. So I was thinking, oh, I'm going to put that into my dream that I find a way to get rid of that shed. And you know what I saw the first thing in the morning when I woke up? An advertisement for Junk King. Yep. And you know what? They're right. They came out. I pointed the shed to them. And they started cleaning it out. And as the guy was cleaning it out, he, he, I noticed he was poking at something. I said, what's going on? And he said, I'm getting rid of the Black Widows. I don't know about you, but I got kind of scared of Black Widows. And that was what was happening in the shed. I could feel something in there that was scary. And I hope he didn't, you know, be, be real mean to him. He must have. He was poking at him. But anyway, what I, I, I'm saying here is that I dreamed, or I dreamt, that I could change that fear I had of this ugly little building on the back of my property. 
And then I started cleaning. Are the rest of you cleaning out these days during the pandemic? pandemic, I started cleaning out my bookshelves. And I had all these wonderful books, but I didn't know what to do with them. And I thought, well, what do you do with used books? And somebody said to me, green books. Well, I didn't realize that I'd been dreaming that much about getting rid of those books. But somebody just started talking to me about dream uh, about green books and how you could get rid of them. And I went, wow, there it goes. And I've been doing the other things that I've been dreaming about that have happened. One of them was spending more time with my family. And then we had the pandemic. And I kept having these dreams about seeing my family, seeing my family. But I wasn't moving. And then all of a sudden, I discovered Zoom and Skype and YouTube. And I started seeing more of my family than I had in years. Also got on Facebook, did that too. And when you think about that, I wanted to write a book. And I kept saying I was going to write a book about my life. And I was pretty excited about it. I just wasn't writing it. And I went to bed and I had a dream that I had that book and I was holding it in my hand. And the next day I started writing. And every day when I get up, I write a bit. Or worry about writing sometimes and don't write at all. But see what happens? I also, once I was realizing I wouldn't be back in the office to do psychic readings, I wanted to continue my clientele. So I put out to my dream world, to my higher self, that I get clients on the phone. And this week, I've had four people call me and I said, I don't believe I've talked to you before. And they said, oh, no. One person had heard about me on Yelp or read about me on Yelp. Another person had heard about me from a friend of hers in Florida. Another person said that she just happened to Google me. Don't know, don't even know what I am on Google. And uh, somebody else, a friend, had recommended. Them. None of these were people I know that I do these readings on. And all because I put it into a dream. Now, some people say, well, what do dreams mean? It depends on who the dreamer is. There are plenty of dream books out there that have symbols, but they're so broad that they quite often don't even work with the dreams you are getting. Start your own dream book. Every time I dream of a little red sports car, that means I'm going to get money. Come on, sports car. You know, every time I dream of a man in a top hat, that means I'm going to learn something new and exciting. I have so many of these in my dream book of what a dream means to me. So what do your dreams mean to you? Start a list of what the, your dreams mean. And let your dreams get you out of the funk. Remember, your higher power is just a dream away. And before you go to bed tonight, please ask your dreams through your higher power for something that's important that you know you deserve. And don't be surprised when you wake up the next morning, tomorrow morning, that you might not either find it or find a path to it. That's how strong you are. That's where you can get in touch with your spirituality to clean out all that guck. You can get in touch with your dreams. You can get in touch with the other side. Remember, if you want to talk to a mother, father, brother, sister who's passed away, ask your higher power to bring them through in your dreams. And there's nothing as wonderful as waking up in the morning having had a talk with your brother who passed away. Isn't it amazing what our higher power can do for us? It's more amazing what you can do for you. Thank you so much. It was wonderful having you here. And you know what? We'll see you next Sunday. But stay tuned for the chat room. It's because you can join our chat room and talk to these wonderful people. 
we have great people that are there just wanting to chat. We're not all alone. We're just a click of the computer away from each other. So if you want to dream about meeting new people, that dream is easy for your higher power to achieve, but it might just be through a computer. Okay, blessed be. Thank you for joining us for this celebration of faith and fellowship. We'll be back next Sunday. And for those of you, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can leave them in the comments section. If you appreciate this video and the work that the Center for Creative Living is doing, please press like on the video. You can share the video. And also, please subscribe, because that will help this community and the church grow. 
Remember, in these difficult and challenging times, the opportunity to give and support an organization that has done so much for the community is tremendously important. Please help the Center for Creative Living continue in the wonderful work that it does. We will make it through this. We will be stronger for it. Our faith will carry us. Be blessed, be safe, and have a wonderful week.